Well, the uh, Gavazos and Fletcher families have been uh, true blue friends for uh, just about 30 years. And so uh, uh, a situation like this, an event like this, a need like this is uh, something that, uh, as Jerry said, is uh, near and dear to our hearts. And we appreciate everyone who came tonight, uh, whether we know you and you responded to our request. And then I say thank you very much. If, we, if you know Jerry, uh, then I also say thank you very much. I think you ought to get to know the Fletchers, too, because uh, it's uh, a nice round out of the uh, Cavazos and Fletcher uh, family friendship. Um, so we have uh, been watching Jerry and Sally uh, now for um, a large number of years, as Jerry mentioned. And um, there's a couple things that I would say. One is that um, it is a difficult disease. You'll hear about that. There's no cure. You'll hear about that. And despite that, and through all this, and through quite a great number of struggles and many years, uh, Sally Gavatsas has been a woman of courage and great dignity. And uh, we all have to, as uh, some poet said, who I'm uh, forgetting right now. Thank you. <laughs> the, um, you know, symbolically, we all have a door to walk through at some point in our lives. And um, we don't know what it's going to be like. And we hope that I, and, and I know uh, people that I know feel and hope that they will be able to encounter that passage uh, with uh, great dignity and, um, and and bravery as well. And so Sally, you set a wonderful model for us. As does Jerry. Um, Jerry doesn't have MSA. Uh, Jerry uh, is uh, a model of uh, how uh, someone can and, and, and should support a spouse and a great friend uh, in time of need. We can all learn a lot from all he's done uh, for Sally uh, during these years. So you might you're going to hear about the the research, and it is uh, a, a, a very promising uh, idea. And um, and I just want to make a couple uh, mentions about that before I introduce the two speakers. the The first thing is that it's early stage research. And early stage research today requires philanthropy. It depends on philanthropy. And people have to uh, prove things to a bit higher level of, uh, of scientific um, success and, and data uh, than uh, before they can get NIH funding. This happens all the time. And so when people have a serious medical problem and an idea about how to uh, perhaps cure or, or uh, reduce the suffering from that problem, uh, they start with philanthropy. They start with friends, they start with family, they start with uh, people that they know uh, through business. And uh, when, that, when there is a proof of concept, uh, National Institute of Health, other foundations, and then ultimately venture capital or corporate sponsors will pick it up. So we have a need here. We have a very interesting idea. And it's not just affecting Sally. It got started with Sally. But a taxi, as you'll hear, is, a, is part of a family of neurodegenerative diseases that includes Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, and probably some others. So now we're all within one or two degrees of separation of uh, people who could also benefit from the work as it's carried on over time. And uh, the other thing is, you might say, well, if I help fund this research, is it good? Is it being done well? So I have a little bit of a perspective here, because this is going to be a collaboration uh, between uh, Mass General, uh, one of the Harvard uh, teaching hospitals and world-class uh, 
researchers and staff members of, the, of Mass General and, um, and, and the Whitehead Institute, which is uh, a, a leading medical institution for research. And uh, I happen to know it, I'm on a board of advisors at Whitehead, and there are two uh, people there, uh, Drs. Lindquist and Janish, who have uh, greatly progressed the ability to work uh, with stem cells. And you're going to hear tonight uh, that the, the way that they want to move ahead in um, <clears throat> going after ataxia and, uh, and, and multiple systems atrophy is to take the two types of stem cells that can be produced here, one with the actual cells of ataxia patients, create uh, pluripotent stem cells, and the other using embryonic stem cells, and hopefully uh, those um, two uh, approaches will be able to generate neuron cells and uh, arglyodendrocyte cells, and uh, those would be the types of cells that die in MSA patients, and then they can use that, those models to test for solutions in a more rapid way. So this is a, a could be a very fundamental leap in moving things forward. The two gentlemen that you'll hear from, uh, Dr. Jeremy Schwalman and Dr. Vikram Karana, uh, and thank you, Wise, Chi, and Jenny for attending as well. Uh, they are uh, foremost in this field. Uh, Dr. Schwalman has uh, an appointment as he's a chair professor in neurology. He's in the neurology department at um, Mass General. Uh, he's head of the ataxia unit. He's a, uh, a fellow that we're fortunate to have all the way from South Africa to uh, lead his practice and his research. He's taken direct care of Sally over these many years. At more than about a hundred publications, I stopped counting, and um, is uh, got a couple dozen major awards for research in his field, and uh, and then he's working with uh, Victor Garana, who has uh, got a joint appointment at uh, Whitehead and Mass General. Is also like Dr. Schwaman on the faculty of Harvard Medical School, MD PhD, and uh, he's made his. Uh, line of research, those movement disorders that stem from neurodegenerative diseases. So these two gentlemen are world class, and we're fortunate to have them from um, in, in our community so that you can hear directly from them, but we would be seeking them out to give best care to Sally and best research as we hope for a cure uh, wherever they were, and fortunately they're just nearby. So we can start with Dr. Schwaman, and uh, he'll uh, uh, talk to us about uh, ataxia, as Jerry uh, suggested. And I think you'll find this very interesting. And again, thank you so much for coming.